CrowdSpring is a seven-month-old Chicago enterprise that connects companies with a community of more than 10,000 designers around the world. Operating in a Spartan West Loop basement beneath rumbling L trains, CrowdSpring lets the companies, which it calls buyers, post design jobs on its website. Designers submit their concepts, the companies pick a winner, and pay between $150 and $4,000 for the work. CrowdSpring charges buyers 15% on top of the prize. It's a hip idea generating plenty of buzz in Chicago's tech community, but founders Michael Sampson and Ross Kimborowski are not your typical dot-com entrepreneurs. Prior to CrowdSpring, neither had worked in technology or run a business. Sampson was a film and TV producer with a recent MBA from Northwestern's Kellogg School. Kimborowski was a litigator at Chicago law firm Ungaretti & Harris. The CrowdSpring journey began in 2006, when Sampson began talking to his old friend Kimborowski about ideas for outsourcing video post-production. Their discussions soon led them down a broader path, driven by a couple of key insights. One was that creative services can, through the internet, be sourced from anywhere in the world. And two was that there were all of these people out there who wanted to create, who had the tools, who had access to the internet, who had this desire to be creative, and they were looking for outlets. We said there's a business there. Eager to test the idea on experienced business folk, Kim Borofsky reached out to a high school classmate, Alex Zoglin, the Orbitz veteran who founded G2 Switchworks. We met him for coffee and we told him the idea and talked him through it, and he said, oh, well that's crowdsourcing. We'd never heard the term before because this was September of 2006 and Jeff Howe's article had been published within the last few weeks. The article in question, a June 2006 Wired story describing the internet-fueled practice of outsourcing work to the masses via social media technologies. Samson and Kim Borofsky knew they were on to something and it scared them to death. We both had huge opportunity costs. We are adults, we've got kids, we've got mortgages. To quell their fears, the pair began stress testing their idea, asking every entrepreneur, financier, lawyer, and business professor they knew to tell them why it wouldn't work. We would go and meet with somebody, and we would show them the slides, and we would talk to them about the business and the idea, and they would rip it to shreds. And we would leave the meeting and we would go back and we would say, okay, let's think hard about why they think it won't work and we would iterate. We wanted somebody to hit our heads against the wall repeatedly to tell us why we will fail. All the head knocking failed to shake Samson and Kimborowski's faith in the essential concept. They kept on, studying the competition, scrapping an early revenue model, and stripping their concept down to its strongest component. They even came up with a simple way to test the concept before pitching it to investors. We found a forum uh, in Australia for graphic designers, and we wanted to see if our thinking, if our, if our model that we wanted to build, tangible services, could work. We offer $200 to designers. We, we put together a short creative brief. We said, we're building a new business focusing on the creative industry. Uh, we'll pay $200 to our favorite design. We'll keep this contest open for two weeks. Uh, and uh, we welcome designers to submit actual designs rather than uh, bids and proposals. And, and this is uh, the logo that we picked. Um, it was one of 144. So we, we got on the phone with him um, and we asked him, who are you? Why were you participating in our project? Uh, so it turned out that he was 28, living in Canada, and his full-time job was uh, a night janitor. Uh, that's what he did for a living. When we were, we were high-fiving across the room because we couldn't believe that this theory that we had was right, that we had discovered the poster child for this business model. Steeled and confident after months of preparation, Samson and Kim Borofsky started calling on potential investors. In 2007, they met with 35 high net worth individuals in Chicago. Eventually, 16 of those ponied up a total of $3 million in seed capital. In May of this year, CrowdSpring went live. Seven months later, Samson and Kim Borofsky say they're on track to meet or slightly exceed their first year revenue projections. They've signed up thousands more designers than they expected. They've completed nearly 1,500 projects. CrowdSpring's payroll has grown to six, not including the founders, and early next year, the little startup is moving up to new office space a few floors above. The L trains will still rumble by, but at least CrowdSpring will be above ground.